Hello, Mrs H here. We are going to be investigating how changing the concentration of the enzyme trypsin affects the rate of protein breakdown. We're going to be using 2% trypsin, which is an irritant to the eyes and skin, and there is a risk of serious eye damage, so eye protection is very important. And if any trypsin gets on the skin, then it needs to be washed off. We're provided with a 2% trypsin solution with which we need to make a cereal dilution. Now these small glass bottles are ideal for cereal dilution because they are short and you can easily get a syringe into them. We're gonna dilute the enzyme solution by half each time. And to keep the numbers simple and the volume simple, we've been provided with 10 centimeters cubed of 2% trypsin solution. We need to extract five centimeters cubed from this and put that into an empty tube then add five centimeters cubed of distilled water. So this tube will now contain 1% trypsin solution. Then take five centimeters cubed of the 1% trypsin solution and add this to five centimeters cubed of distilled water to make your 0.5% solution. Then five centimeters cubed of your 0.5% solution Add five centimeters cubed of distilled water, which will give you your 0.25% and then so on and so on. Just halving the previous concentration each time and add in five centimeters cubed of distilled water. Then you end up with 2%, 1%, 0.5%, 0.25% and 0.13% trypsin solution. Now you've got all your trypsin concentrations and you've used the serial dilution technique. Then you need to label six boiling tubes with the corresponding concentrations. Do that at the top of each boiling tube so that it doesn't rub off when it's in the water bath. We're gonna use the trypsin, a protease enzyme, which will catalyze the breakdown of the protein in milk. As you know, milk is a white liquid and you can't see through it. When the protein in milk is broken down, we can see through it. So the end of the reaction will be when we can see a cross through the milk. Place this cross under the boiling tube in the rack, then get all of your boiling tubes ready by adding two centimeters cubed of milk to each one. The temperature of the reaction needs to be controlled so we'll place the tubes containing the milk into a thermostatically controlled water bath and we'll put it around 30 degrees C so that the reaction doesn't take too long because we've only got one lesson to do this in. Take the boiling tube marked 2% containing the milk and place that over the cross. You should not be able to see the cross through the milk. Then you need to add two centimeters cubed of the 2% trypsin to that milk and start the timer immediately. You will need to look directly above the tube until the cross becomes visible. When the cross does become visible, you stop the timer and you record your time in seconds in your pre-prepared table. You can see the cross through the milk solution on the left hand side as the protein has been broken down. And as a contrast, the tube on the right just has milk. So you can definitely see a difference between these two. Once you've done this, you need to repeat that for 1% trypsin solution and then 0 0.5, 0 0.25 and 0.13%. Each time you'll be recording the time in seconds into your table. And then once you've done that, you're going to calculate the rate of reaction. You do this by taking one and dividing it by time. And then you can pop your rates into the table there. Notice that the column headings in your table are descriptive. So it's not just like, oh, time in seconds or rate or concentration percentage. It's very clear what it's the concentration of, what the time is of. For A-level, your table headings need to be very clear. Then we'll use this data to plot two graphs. One graph will be 
the effect of the concentration of trypsin on the time it takes for the reaction to take place that is when the cross becomes visible and then you are going to plot a graph with concentration of trypsin and then the rate per second of that reaction remember you need to make sure the axes are labeled and that you've used a sensible scale use a sharp pencil absolutely no pen whatsoever no not even for the title and don't forget to give your graph a title by the way but it must be in pencil draw a line of best fit and that could be a curve or a straight line it depends on what your data looks like it should be and here this data looks like a curve of best fit this graph supports a theory on the effect of increasing enzyme concentration because you can see that the higher the concentration of trypsin, the less time it takes to catalyze the breakdown of protein in the milk. And that will be because there are more active sites available to catalyze the breakdown of the protein substrate in the milk. So as examiners like you to say, there will be more enzyme substrate complexes being formed. And then you can see that the graph starts to level off as the concentration increases. And that's going to be due to a limiting factor. So you need to have a think about what would be the most influencing limiting factor here. And it is going to be the substrate concentration. The reaction can only go as fast as whatever is in the least supply. So you can increase the enzyme concentration and keep increasing, keep increasing. But if there's not a high enough substrate concentration, that is going to limit how quickly the product is going to be made or the substrate is going to be broken down. And you do the graph for your rate as well. And the less time a reaction takes means that the rate will be faster. So if you have a look at the rate graph, you can see that from this graph, the rate increases with increase in enzyme concentration, and then it starts to level off. And the theory behind that is going to be the same. It's going to reach a point where the rate of reaction can't go any faster. And that's going to be due to limiting factors. Here, again, is going to be the substrate concentration. If we were asked, to improve the accuracy of our curves of best fit, the best thing we can do is use concentrations in between the concentrations we've actually used. And that way we can get more points plotted on the curve and the distance between 1% and 2% trips and is quite a way and it's quite difficult to know, well, is my curve supposed to go that way? If you had a few more points plotted along the way, then it would show the pattern more clearly and that would improve the accuracy of your graph. And that is it. If you found this useful, please like and subscribe for more content.